We can jump into this West Side, man. Um, okay. Yeah, let's jump into the new West Side. West Side dropped the project today. It's called Peace Fly God. Mm-hmm. West Side, West Side Gun, <clears throat> excuse me. West Side Gun is a curator. So, you know, we got everything from Mad Lib on here. And Stove had a lot of work on here. Um, what was it Don uh, Carrera? You just uh, you just went out on my side at least. Up, oh, I think I paused on everybody else's side too, man. Let's see what's going on here, man. All right, I'm gonna jump in the chat issues. like uh-huh. quick while. No, I think I should. Am I good now? No. You don't see me now? Yeah, now I see you. Okay. So yeah, Don Carrera, we got uh, Mad Lib on there as well. And obviously, you know, you got Stove God out here putting in work. What did you think about the project? Um, I thought that it was uneven. That's, mm. I mean, <clears throat> there were a few takes that I have on it. I feel like, you know, we just shared. There's some, there's some really good stuff on here. There's some standout stuff on here. I want to bring up, you know, we always laud him for his production choices. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with this album, and maybe it's not the tracks. I think it actually does have something to do with the actual um, melodic, slow down nature of the tracks, which is that's an upstate New York, like Buffalo, th- you know what I mean? Right. What they're known for. But I felt like the BPMs on some of the records. We're just all in literally that same, like, it didn't even feel like it was 88. Yeah. It almost felt like it was running at 78, 75. <laughs> and it's like. I was um, going to say, Blue Collar Hustle got the super chat here real quick. He said, sorry, Coop, I spammed you. The link uh, was too hype. He's talking about the Nas link. Uh, Nas the Goat no. says, I'm sorry that the album is trash, pure garbage. Wow, yeah. I don't think it's pure garbage. I think it's some gems on there. Um, yeah, there's some stuff in there, but it's very it is underwhelming, especially the fact that you know Stove's on there and Mad Lib's on there, and after Mad Lib coming off of this Black Star album, it doesn't even really sound like the same producer. But again, well, sounds for some like people, that, that might have been more West Side's choices. I'm about to say, for some people, uh, Mad Lib sounding different than he did on the Black Star album is a good thing <laughs> for some people. <laughs> Yeah. You know, what? Well, yeah, was production an issue? Did anybody have issue with the production on the Black Star album? I think I, the criticisms I mean, is most for the most part. I mean, most has garnered most of the criticism, but uh, like, like how about this? I mean, Talib has been the MVP of that album. Inspector you know, says in, in uh, with the, the rap head rhetoric, right. Inspector with the Super Chat says, are y'all really feeling beats with no drums, like an album full of them? Griselda's sound is too predictable. I just told you. I mean, didn't I just raise the question of all the songs having like that slowed down BPM to a fault? I just said that. Yeah, I mean, but I think that, you know, the fact that there's no... What does it make the whole album trash? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. The fact there's no beats on there, though, it's like... Well, I won't say no beats on there, but a lot of them didn't even have, like, percussion on them. No drums. It's very raw. I think that's good to do for, like, one or two songs. But, yeah. So so can we talk about what happened here with this album? And that's one of the things that I kind of want to bring up. Well, really, how about this? On Pray for Pairs, he only does this one time, and that's on Claiborne Kick. Mm Mm-hmm. Every song can't sound like Claiborne Kick. Right. You can do that one or two times. And really what happens on this album is the opposite happens. If you actually go to the track list and the only time where you feel like it's sped up a little bit, I would say, is on um, Horses on Sunset mm-hmm. and, uh, and the Don Housen track, the solo joint that he has on there. That's the only time that it actually feels like there's some action even going on, like in terms of the production. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I would I'm trying to see what was the what was the aim of this is some of the point. Because even like I was taking my daughter to work today, she heard Jesus crack and she was like, What? <laughs> you know? And it's not like right. she's a kid anymore. She's fifteen going on sixteen. She like, What? Right. She was like and even she was like, He usually puts it together better than this. Yeah, I mean 
you know, could the question be raised that music just isn't the focus? I mean, I think we've talked about this before. It feels that way. You're yeah. right. It feels like music's not the focus anymore. And so, and I so, think the thing with Conway and Benny, what makes them different is because their bar work is important and they have to really be in tune and in it on the music when it comes to the bars. They have to, they, they have to lean in on their bar work. Right. right. Dumb it down to sleepy music. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's definitely underwhelming. I, I mean, I didn't really have many expectations from this project, for whatever reason. I don't know. I just didn't feel it. But so, this, yeah, this definitely was still underwhelming. You know, I I expect a little bit more from Westside, at least for me. No, so even on um, what is it? Uh, not Fly Guy 2. What was the other one? When he did three in one year, what was the last one? Maybe oh, you're talking about um, um, uh, the shady one. Uh, say it in the chat, guys. Uh, L-Dub with the super chat says, Griselda's too one-dimensional and predictable, period. Um, what, what album are we talking about? We're talking about... I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah. Give me one second. Just, just got so These brain work. freezes happen when you're on live. I mean, he's no. I mean, no. They they happen when you get somebody like him that's like made like just, fifteen albums in like seven years. Yeah, man. I mean, but Pray for Paris is an unforgettable one, you know. And uh, Fly God too. Man, that said, Mike' expectations was too high. Who <laughs> made the sunshine? Yeah. So you remember how? Sunshine. Remember how? Do you remember when I when we reviewed Who Made the Sunshine? Yep. I kind of had referenced it and spoke of it in a manner as like a piece of art more than a piece of music. This almost feels like, this almost feels like tracks that are being selected to play in an art gallery while he's curating. It does. That's fine for his overall business mind and even the creative and artistic aesthetic, but it's the music business. (laughs) It is. And most people aren't going to be in an art gallery listening to this. Most people aren't even going to be able to gather and garner that perspective of it that are fans of his. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, is are you able very to, problematic? Are you able to rate this project? If I did, I... okay. So here's the thing. So when you have something like this, that I guess it say it's slowed down, or people would say it's boring, and you're not the writer that Kendrick Lamar is. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? See, this is where your pin game and and Westside can rap. Right. I'm not saying he's not a dope MC. So I want to be careful about how I'm phrasing that. I consider him to be a dope MC. Like Brutus, George Bondo. Oh no, he's rapping his no, he's just rapping next to Benny and Conway. That's just some of the better bar work you're gonna find in this generation. Right. And Conway's plays possibly any generation. So or at times with Conway in any generation. So he's up against like heavyweights, having to be family members, but he can rap. But the fact that he's not what you would consider to be a supreme A1, like lyricist and rapper, it hurts you on projects like this where you miss the mark on some of the other things. Right. Yeah. If I was rating it, I couldn't, I don't even know how I could give it a three and a half. Wouldn't you have to say this is a three? Damn, that's tough, man. Yeah. Okay, I mean, like, like if 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 it's, I mean, if it's not, just kind of like let's let's like really unpack it and talk about why it's not. Like, there are some moments on here. It might be a three and a half. I can give it a. Okay, so what do you think of Big Ass Bracelet? I like Big Ass Bracelet. It's one of the Me ones too. I like. Yeah. Okay, what do you think of Jesus Crap? Eh, I skipped through it. Yeah, first of all, it's too long and. You, and you know I love me some stove. Uh, I don't love the rhetoric on this one. And then right. I was thinking about what we were having when it came to the conscious versus dope boy rapper conversation yeah. that we were having. Yeah. And this was one of those records. I said, "See, I said this is one for the conscious people to check the box off on their side." Right. When I just listened to the whole record, I was like, "And it's eight minutes of it." I was like, "Uh." You know, yeah. and then my daughter hopped in the car. Keep in mind, I heard it the night before. Then my daughter hopped in the car this morning. And of course, I'm playing the album from the top because I'm reviewing stuff. I'm like, hey, it's review time. She's like, what you got? You know, she's like, 
She's like, what is he doing? She's like, what is this? She was like, oh, she was like, is that what God did? <laughs> <laughs> 007 She's looking with at the me like, this is chat. the stuff you listen to, dude. You know? 007 with the super chat in here. He says, uh, side note, y'all should make time to watch Supreme Team on Showtime. It's dope. It's dope. Literally, <laughs> figuratively, uh, seeing the drug game impact the hip hop. Wow. Have I seen that? I saw a documentary that was about something along those lines. Uh, Mad Max of the Super Chat says, y'all bugging the first six tracks are straight. Then it went into some mid, but the beats were crazy. I love the first six. He never been for me, but uh, this was all right. So we got somebody who's not even a West Side fan who liked it. Andre Shashir in the building says, no camouflage monk and one conductor Williams track. Okay, so... Go ahead. Like I said, we, so I think we're both somewhere in the middle on Jesus Crack. Like, I like it. It's okay. I don't love it. I can do without it. Now, he's t- typically a great album starter. Like, listen to how some of his projects start off. The Cow. Yeah. No Vacancy. Michael Irvin. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he... And then Bob Hold Seiko. on, Supreme Blind Tell starts off with God's Don't Bleed. Hold on, Supreme Blind Tell starts off with God's Don't Bleed, Mike. He's got a standard, man. He really does. He's got a standard. And it's like, so, you know, so, so when this I'm, is underwhelming. So when I'm, yeah, so even though he's not like uh, he's not like a all-time great MC in terms of like his lyrical bar work, in terms of how people view him, oh, no, 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 but his standard of album making is pretty damn great. So They said the documentary you know? just came out today. That's right. I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, we got to check out that Supreme um, documentary on Showtime. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you as no, you're I'm cool. Correct that. Takes me back to Nas's bars on Memory Lane. Some fiends, what? Some fiends scream about Supreme Team, a Jamaica Queens thing. Mm. 